Yeah, we're here at Mutichula, you know, right beside Uluru, you know, the home of my ancestors. But of course, bush living was bush. You totally took most of your things from the land you're on. We just lived on the land as people of the land. To us, it was a natural way of being. Being part of all that there is was just the way you was. You didn't see anything any different from you. It was just a way of life that was inclusive of all that there is through life. Life is the binding and the connecting way the oneness is. If you're alive, you connect to everything else that is alive. But that oneness included everything that was around us and, uh, and you were raised with that teachings from a child upwards. Part of land which has been handed down to you by your ancestors, we say the granny law, has given me my responsibility now that I'm grown up to care for my country, care for my mother, <laughs> you know, care for everything that is around me, the oneness the completeness of that oneness, to be responsible in both caring, in, in every single way which we call the kanyini, kanyini, caring with unconditional love, with the responsibility. You, you feel that, you feel that, that so well, uh, that you feel good when you're in that space and you kind of feel you're living with family when you include everything that is alive in that space and that it's a huge space and there's a lot of specimens of everything you could possibly imagine there with you and then you go grow up knowing that these are all your family you can never feel lonely in that situation you know, you just can't. How can you when all around you is family members from this ground up to all the trees around you to the clouds hanging up around you, the birds flying by, the animals and reptiles that are just hidden in the shrub there for now, you know, but can come out if they want to hunt around for their little food, you know, <laughs> and then they can become food for us as well. You know, it is a beautiful way of being. It doesn't push anyone out, but it brings everybody in. And the completeness of being who you are, where you are, is a really good feeling. And it's a beautiful feeling. I wouldn't exchange it for anything. That's why I'm here, right beside all of it. <laughs> I am so lucky. This Aborigine gentleman makes it look so natural to live in harmony with nature. He's the epitome of someone living in a state of oneness. But what about the rest of us? Why is it so difficult for modern people to gain access to these experiences? Ravi, any ideas? Part of this goes back at least to the 16th century when the whole idea of nature was a mechanization of nature that the nature is like a big machine and we can study it like a machine, etc. And then a kind of a separation of ourselves from what we study. In spite of the great glory of science, one has to also realize that it has a way of going about knowing something which separates the knower from what is known. In a way, it is the the product of a patriarchal culture that says God is in heaven, he is not on earth, 
So it doesn't matter what happens to the earth. The earth is the province of human beings who are the lords of the earth to do with what they will. And this has caused a devastation. And, and what is not understood, I think it's really important, this has caused not just an ecological devastation, but also a devastation to the soul. Because the soul is traditionally the place of connection between heaven and earth. That is the symbols, the archetypes, this inner world of the creative imagination. And, and we have wrecked havoc in the outer world. We have polluted it. We have laid waste to it. And we have also polluted the inner world of the soul without even knowing what we are doing because we, have, we no longer honor the sacredness of everyday things. And, that connected us to, to life, and life is something extraordinarily sacred.